Apple just announced iOS, iPadOS, and macOS 26. And the Reminders app is getting fantastic new features that are going to help you remember everything. By far, my favorite new feature is this. I can grab my locked iPhone and long press the action button on the side and immediately start writing down something that I need to do, like pay my water supply bill. I can tap inbox at the top over here and just assign that to a list. I can tap this button and say, remind me tomorrow and tap and now this is saved. Now this is actually a combination of two new features that overlay at the top is called quick reminders. And the other thing we're using is a control. And even if you don't have an iPhone with that action button, you can still do this. I'll show you how, and I'll also show you all the other handy new features coming to reminders soon. To set up the quick reminder feature with the action button, I'm gonna go into the settings app and then just find action button. And now I just need to swipe to the right until I see controls. And then I just have to tap choose a control and I'm gonna search for the reminders app over here and I'm gonna tap new reminder. And by the way, this only works for now on the beta software, right? But if you're not on the beta software, this is coming to your phone in a few months. Now what I can do is like I showed you before, long press that action button and it pops up this quick reminder overlay and I can capture a to-do really quickly. Now. Another way to do this, if you don't have the action button on your iPhone, is to open Control Center. So I'm just swiping down from the top or swiping in from the top right, and this is Control Center. And you'll see it's got this new liquid glass aesthetic, which uh, I have opinions on, <laughs> but you know, we'll see how it turns out. I'm just gonna now tap near the bottom and long press until you see this. Then I'm gonna tap Add a Control, and I can find that same control, just type reminders, see new reminder. And now this control sits over here. Let me move it over there. And so now what I can do is even with my iPhone locked, right? I can tap it and pop open control center, tap that button, and I can start typing, for example, buy new slippers and go like that. And now if I open the reminders app in the inbox, this to do is sitting right here and I can assign it a time and so on. So this is such an easy and fast way to capture something that you need to do. And if I'm in conversation with someone, maybe I love being able to pull out my phone very quickly and write something down, especially from the lock screen. So I don't see all kinds of notifications. So I don't get distracted and just continue to stay present in the moment. And by the way, in iOS 26, you will also be able to map this action button on the side of your iPhone, as well as this control I just showed you in the control center to different apps, not just to the reminders apps. So you can choose any control here. For example, if you search for notes, you can do a new quick note in the notes app. I'll make a separate video about how that works and how convenient that is. And it works with third-party apps too, like with my favorite calendar app, Fantastical. For example, I can create an event in Fantastical. And now if I long press that button, it's like this, and I can start adding my event. The Fantastical app, by the way, works together really well with the Reminders app. So you'll see that all of the things that I've got on my plate today are here in Fantastical, and that's coming from my Reminders app, which I'll show you a little bit more about later in the video. The quick reminder feature is also coming to iPad. Let me show you what it looks like there. I'll just open Safari, and here I'm looking at an article from The Verge, and maybe I want to set a reminder. I'm just going to open Control Center, and I've set up that same quick reminder control right here. So I'm just going to tap that, and now I can say, watch the interview with Craig Federighi. And I can set that to a particular list, like for example, my learning list, and I can set that to remind me in one hour or whatever I might want and just save that. Now, while this is really handy, I do feel like Apple missed an opportunity here. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to Control Center and I press this button over here, it's the quick note button. This is for the notes app. The quick note button lets you take a note about something you're looking at on your iPad or on your iPhone or on your Mac, by the way. And I can say, for example, this uh, interviewer, Joanna, is really sharp. But what I can do is I can see where it says add link. I can press add link and it automatically attaches the link to what I'm looking at. In this case, the link to this web page, this article from The Verge to my note. And then when I go to the notes app, I can go find the note and you'll see that it sits right here with a link back to the article. But unfortunately, when I use quick reminders, that doesn't work yet. There is no button to quickly add the URL or the link to the reminder, which is a shame because if I just actually go ahead and copy this link 
and I go into the actual Reminders app and I go ahead and find this particular reminder, there is a URL field that I could actually paste that link into and you'll see that now the link is attached to the reminder. So hopefully that bit is coming later. And maybe you didn't know about Quick Note yet, so now you know and now you can start using that in the Notes app. Now another feature that does already exist and that you're probably gonna find quite handy is suggested reminders. Here I'm looking at a note in Apple Notes and I'll just collapse the sidebar, make this full screen for easier viewing. Now what I can do over here is I can actually share this particular note using the share button over here at the top right and I can share these meeting notes. Let's say I met with a mortgage advisor, I wanna buy a home, right? I can share this to reminders. And now what you're gonna see is this Apple Intelligence suggestions here at the bottom. So Apple Intelligence is actually suggesting some of the to-dos that might come out of these meeting notes. And I can just tap include all, or as you saw, I could include some of them, but not others. And I'll just delete this top one and I'll put this, uh, let's, let's save this to the inbox for now. And as you'd expect, now I can go to the Reminders app and I can go to my inbox and I can see these particular to-dos. So we're starting to see here the promise of Apple intelligence, what Apple promised last year, but now is apparently not coming until next year, where there is the use of AI to create your personal productivity system that's as automated as possible, where Apple intelligence is reading your emails and your notes and you know maybe listening to your calls, but all in a private way on your device or as much on your device as possible and making your to-do list for you based on what it knows about you. Hopefully that's gonna be amazing. I think it's coming, but we have to wait a little while longer and in the meantime, we can see these little sneak peeks of it. And by the way, you'll see that my main reminders list is called Inbox. This is something I always recommend that everyone does by default. It's called Reminders, but you can just long press it on iPad or iPhone or right click on the Mac and just go show list info and you can just change the name here. I like to think of it as the Inbox, which is where my tasks, my to-dos, my reminders go before I sort them into different buckets. Another Apple intelligence feature in reminders that's maybe gonna be quite neat, especially if you have long lists of reminders is auto categorize. I'll head over to my admin and finances list over here and I'm gonna tap the ellipsis at the top and I'm showing you this on iPad by the way, but it also does work on iPhone. I'm just finding it a little bit easier to see right here. I'll tap the ellipsis and see where it says auto categorize. I'm gonna tap that. It's gonna take a second, but it's going to actually create sections within this list to neatly organize my to-dos that are related, which I find really handy. Now, is this perfect? No, it's not perfect, but it can be pretty useful. For example, there's a section for my subscriptions and cancellations. So I like to keep track when I sign up for something new that I'm gonna get charged after a free trial in 30 days or maybe I'm just gonna get recharged. I like to put in a reminder to cancel so that if I don't use the service very much, I save myself some money. By the way, a cool new feature coming specifically to iPad is that apps now have a menu bar and file menus. So I'm using my iPad over here with my magic keyboard. And if I move the mouse cursor all the way up, I'm gonna see this menu bar right here. So there's an actual file menu and an edit menu and a view. And this is great for getting to features and apps that you may not have known about, like showing your to-dos in a column view, for example, but it's also just great for getting to features that otherwise take a lot of tapping or clicking. And here's one that you may not have known about yet. If you go to file, you can see view templates. So did you know that the reminders app actually lets you create templates? For example, I have a template packing list. If I click into it, I can click edit template. It looks like this and I can very easily create a new list based off of this template. So the way that you do that is just going to edit template and clicking the ellipses over here and say create list from template. And then I can start working through this list as I'm getting ready for a trip. And speaking of traveling, the next new feature is really handy for travelers and also for people who just work with different time zones. I'll demonstrate on the Mac so that I can also show you what Apple Reminders with the new liquid glass aesthetic looks like on the Mac. So here's the main screen and what you can see is I'm looking at my today view and uh, let me actually tell you a little bit about that. I've just organized my day into morning, afternoon and evening or tonight, which you can do as well and set up some reminders. So. Uh, the, I actually ran the laundry already, so I can check that off. I am currently showing the, you the awesome new reminders features, and these are some things I'm gonna do this afternoon and this 
evening. Now, last year, Apple integrated the Reminders app with the Calendar app, so I can also see these to-dos on my calendar alongside my calendar events. And here's what that looks like. This is just the Apple Calendar app, and you can see that my Reminders, such as showing you guys the awesome new features in the Reminders app, is on here, and some of the things that I need to do later this afternoon are also listed on my calendar. And if you don't see this, what you can do is you can just open this side panel over here and just make sure that scheduled reminders is checked and then your reminders are also going to show up. Super helpful. Okay, let me show you this time zone feature I was talking about. Now, first of all, I'm over here in Safari and I want to book some tickets to an operette called HMS Pinafore that's going to be on at the English National Opera in London later this year and tickets will go on sale soon and I want to make sure I snap up a ticket so I wanna set a reminder to do that. So this is just in Safari and what I can do is I can share this web page to the Reminders app. So I'm just gonna do that like so and I'm gonna choose a list and I'm gonna set this to my fun and trips list and then I'll just click add. Now I'm going to head back to the Reminders app and you'll see that in the fun and trips list, I've got this item over here. So I'll call it uh, book HMS Pinafore tickets. And then I'm gonna go to the settings of the Reminders app and I'm going to turn on this new setting that says set time zone manually. So you'll see this thing appear here at the top and I can change the time zone, but we'll hold off on that for a second. I'm just gonna click the eye icon to access the settings for this particular reminder. And we're gonna set a date, let's say that ticket sales start in two days and a time, let's say they start at, at noon, but not noon in Amsterdam, but noon in the London. And I'll just click okay. And now what that's gonna do, right, is it's actually gonna show me hey, it's at noon GMT plus one, but that is 1 p.m. my time. And I can also see here, for example, you know, what time is that in New York? It'd be 7 a.m. if I was gonna be in New York. So very handy if you're working with different time zones and you gotta make sure that you're doing something on time. Now, one thing that I'm gonna do that's extra over here is I'm gonna set an early reminder 15 minutes ahead of time so that I can get myself ready to book these tickets right on time. There are also a few other new reminders features that Apple mentioned or alluded to that are coming. Like right here, Reminders is going to be able to suggest tasks and follow-ups based on emails. I haven't seen this be available yet, so I haven't been able to test it, but when it does become available, I'll make sure to show you how it works. However, in the meantime, you can already supercharge your productivity with the Reminders app, with the features that are already available right now by downloading my free Apple Reminders cheat sheet. The link is in the video description, so go ahead and grab that, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, and I'm going to call it, um, <sighs> fantastic man fantastic can't type